Good afternoon, everyone. So as you'll see, in a big show of solidarity, I'm even wearing WSO2 colors today. That was, that was a coincidence. But uh, yeah, I mean, I speak very quickly, so I'm going to get through this very quickly as well. And I'd love to keep this conversational. So if you do have questions, please do feel free to ask in the middle of the presentation as well, actually. All right, so we've already heard a lot about open banking. And technology actually is, has been enabling huge shifts in the overall financial services ecosystem. Um, especially in this part of the world, in China, I'm sure we've all heard of WeChat, Alipay. WeChat has more than a billion users, billion monthly active users, 800 million of which are actually WeChat Pay users as well. More than 300,000 offline stores in China accept WeChat. Then there's Alipay. There's more than 526 million users of Alipay again. And uh, they've actually even become the biggest money market fund in China, right? All across the world, there's digital-only offerings coming in. There's Fedor, N26. In, in uh, Germany, there's Move-In in the US. So multiple such offerings coming in. I live in Hong Kong. Even in Hong Kong, uh, an entire uh, virtual banking uh, directive has come out now. And multiple you know, uh, companies are now trying to create digital-only offerings even over there. Right? Um, of course, because of this whole competition coming into the market, the bigger banks across the markets are now looking at opening up their APIs. And you heard a lot about that already in the previous sessions about open banking and open APIs. You know, I've taken some examples here like DBS. And these are banks who are opening up their APIs not just because there's regulatory pressure and, regulatory, and regulations are asking them to, but because there's competition and they want to stay ahead of the curve, they're already innovating, right? DBS has more than 155 APIs on their API management platform. Uh, we, we are working with the Union Bank of Philippines. They have more than 60 APIs on their platform as well. Multiple banks are actually opening their APIs. Then you heard how policy overall across the world is changing as well. Uh, in some cases, policymakers are, you know, you heard Seshika's Se Se session already on how they're right now just taking a wait and watch approach, or in Europe and the UK where it's a very, directed approach with PSD2 and with open banking. Uh, and then, of course, there's countries like India, where it's very interesting how financial services is literally being created as a public utility. The India stack is, it's, it's an achievement in itself. I mean, it has everything right from Aadhaar, where more than 1.17 billion people now have Aadhaar identities, right? And uh, there's the whole Digi Locker, there's EKYC, there's eSign. It's really enabled lots of businesses to be able to do things much more efficiently. So what is all of this is leading to a lot of benefits, of course, for technology companies, as I just spoke about. Even the big banks who have the resources, they're being able to create their own uh, API management platforms, they're being able to create their accelerators, they're being able to work with fintechs. Even their core banking providers and their technology companies who work with them are trying to stay ahead of the curve by, you know, by creating, uh, by taking their platforms ahead of the curve as well. But what does this actually mean for the smaller challenger banks in the developing markets, right? The banks who don't have the resources to be able to create and manage their own fintech teams, the banks who don't have the resources to be able to manage and create their own API management platforms. How, how would they stay ahead of the curve? How would they still continue to stay relevant? So there are actually huge structural as well as firm-wide challenges for such banks in the developing markets. Like I said, I mean, the whole high search cost and cost of adoption. Imagine I as a small and medium-sized bank, I want to be able to know which KYC companies, which KYC fintechs I can work with. Now, literally, I need to look at hundreds of fintechs. I need to evaluate their capabilities. I need to be able to see what their APIs are like. So I, lit I need a specialized team to be able to do that, which is what the bigger banks are doing. But it's not easy for the small banks to be able to do that. And if you see the other side of that, even for fintechs, it's exactly the same problem. I mean, there's a very interesting statistic, actually. There's more than 5,000 5, fintechs across the world. But only about 4 to 5 percent of them have actually gone outside of their home markets and it's been able to expand internationally because this is such a challenge. This matchmaking between banks and fintechs, it's quite a challenge. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's this whole, you know, other than just this whole uh, ability to be able to find fintechs to work with and curate fintechs, 
when, once, the, once the banks know which fintechs to work with, then the whole idea of how do you actually even test uh, and see the APIs, how do you actually create uh, uh, working, working applications with, with these fintechs. And then, you know, it's the firm-wide level uh, issues of there's legacy technology, which we just heard Nation, Nation Trust Bank talk about as well. There's skill issues as well, that there's not enough you know, technology uh, teams and people with the skills available to be able to open APIs and be able to use APIs of fintechs as well. And the same for fintechs. It's, it's very hard for them to create big teams which can go and do this business development effort with multiple banks across multiple geographies. So when we looked at this, I mean, it's the Monetary Authority of Singapore has actually been a big evangelist in the whole fintech space. They're one of the regulators who are far ahead of the curve, actually. They've got a specialized fintech team, which is looking at multiple things. I mean, if you look at their whole fintech strategy, they're doing multiple things. And in a conversation between IFC, uh, the International Finance Corporation, and the MAS, we realized that what can we do about this? Because we do want banks to innovate. We want, you know, there's a problem statement both on the bank side and the fintech side. What can we do to, to create something which can help enable both to work better? And that's where the whole idea of AFIN, the ASEAN Financial Innovation Network, about a year ago came about. Uh, and the idea is that it should be, it, it'll enable both the private sector development as well as some market creation actions as well. And it'll be a common sandbox platform where we will curate fintechs. We will go to the banks and ask them for their problem statement. We'll curate fintechs. We'll put them uh, on this platform. We'll put their APIs. We'll ask them to host their APIs on the platform. So the banks can imagine it, it's, it's as simple as just coming on the console, being able to, you know, you want to find a KYC fintechs. You will see our list of curated KYC fintechs over there already. And then you can further dig, drill down deeper. And I'll take you through some of that. Like, WSO2 actually helped us to create a beta version already, which really helped to make it real in the, in, in the, vision, in the view of all the stakeholders that we've been working with. Um, and then on the market creation side, uh, we'll obviously, once the platform's live, there's fintechs and banks using the platform, then we'll start looking at things like common standards for APIs as well. We'll start looking at how regulators can be observers on the platform also, because learning from regulators like Mass, who are ahead of the curve, who are already thinking a lot on how fintech can be, what fintech regulation needs to look like, you know, it'll spread to the rest of the markets as well. And we'll create standardized membership rules, how there'll be whole integrity in the platform and trust uh, about why banks and fintechs should, can come together on this platform. So, yes, it's basically, like I mentioned, we've set this up as a common platform. Over the last year, we've actually gone across to the ASEAN markets, more than 10 countries, where we've worked with the banks, we've met different teams of banks, we've convinced them about the whole idea of this platform, for being a part of this platform. And the fact that this platform is, you know, it's backed by stakeholders like the World Bank Group, by the MAS, by the ASEAN Bankers Association, that adds a lot of credibility to the overall platform, and which is why banks have finally, you know, they want to work with fintechs. They do want to collaborate, and this platform, they can see the advantages of how being on this platform will actually help them to stay ahead of the curve. Uh, so this will be, and like I mentioned, we'll, the ultimate objective is, is obviously financial inclusion, that when we enable these small and mid-sized banks to be able to work with fintechs, there'll be new innovations in the market. They'll be able to reach sectors which they haven't been able to reach before, and ultimately that will lead to financial inclusion, which is what IFC's mandate is. So how will all of this alleviate some of the structural and firm level challenges which, we spoke, which I just spoke about? Uh, as a sandbox approach, obviously we want to promote interoperability, so we will start looking at common API standards. In fact, we are already looking at, because now that we're looking at APIs of fintechs across different segments, we can actually see how we need to standardize those APIs as well, what the common integration rules should be, what the common operating rules should be. We're speaking, Mass is actually going and speaking to all the regulators across the different ASEAN countries as well and making them understand that this is about not just banks opening their APIs, but banks being API consumers as well, which is a very different idea actually, where 
it's the fintechs APIs which the banks are consuming, and at some point, the banks can also host their APIs on our platform. Um, so as you see over there, I mean, we have a very ambitious aim, actually, that we are starting with this, but we actually want to be, we want to become the biggest platform where maximum number of fintechs that you can think of, you can find them on our platform, and all their APIs will be hosted over there. The banks can actually very easily then have the matchmaking can work very easily on this platform. How we leverage technology, I mean, this is just a broad vision of what, what the platform will look like. This layer in the middle is what we think of the magic layer of the Affin platform, which will obviously have multiple components. Well, one component will be the marketplace, where, which is what I spoke about, where all the fintech's information is going to be there. The second layer is then the API manager, where actually the fintechs will have their APIs. And then will be the actual sandbox where banks, once they want to work with those APIs, how can they actually very, very easily have all the DevOps tools and everything on that sandbox itself to be able to create accounts, to be able to then use the APIs and experiment with those APIs and know what does the, do, does the fintech's capability actually meet what their requirements are and can they then, there'll be a path to go live as well from there on. So yeah, this, this, and then imagine that any fintech sitting in any part of ASEAN, once their APIs are hosted on this platform, any bank in any part of ASEAN can then actually experiment. So that is how powerful this platform can be, that anywhere in ASEAN, innovation can happen because of this. This is just an example of, yeah, this is how we used uh, the WSO2 API manager. Uh, and in fact, Darren is here from Industry IT. Industry IT are one of the technology consultants who were also working with us on this, where we very quickly sort of put this together. And I, as a non-technical person also, as a non-technical product owner, I could very easily use this platform, put the API information of the different fintechs. And this is, this is what we use to actually show to the bank, show to the fintechs, make them visualize exactly what this platform is going to be about and how they can use it, what the benefits for them will be. So you can, and the WSO team was actually very, very good at even helping us out with some customizations that we required. For example, you know, once you see the API of the fintech and you want to be able to subscribe to that API, then what if the fintech actually wants to host their own NDA on the platform as well? And hence, you know, there can be a page like this where their NDA is also hosted. So it's not just NDAs with us as the platform, but also bilateral NDAs that can be enabled between the banks and the fintechs just via this platform. That that's how powerful it can be. And of course, then yeah, signing up for the banks and signing up for the fintechs, all of, all of that. Um, yes, so that's, that is all I have. Uh, like I said, very quick, because we are in a very early stage right now. Uh, last one year has been spent doing all the biz dev, creating all the relationships, working with the regulators, working with the banks across the region, working with the fintechs. We've curated a whole list of fintechs across the region. We've spoken with you know, 30 to 40 of them. We've actually seen APIs of 30 to 40 of them as well. So this, this whole year has been spent doing that. And yesterday I spoke about it a little bit, but the stage we are at now is that we've run a process uh, called the demonstration of capability process, where we invited proposals from multiple technology companies to come together. And give their proposals to us. We said, okay, we need a marketplace, we need an API manager, we need a sandbox. Multiple different companies have these capabilities, actually. So instead of us going and figuring out who has the best capability, we told them, you work together, you guys figure out you know, who has the best capabilities to partner with, and you come back to us with a proposal. We got more than 12 proposals, actually. And from there, we selected three to do this demonstration of capability, where, again, we told them, you have three to four weeks. We introduced them to some of our banks. We introduced them to some of our fintechs. And we said that, OK, now show us what you can deliver in three to four weeks. And we were very, very pleasantly surprised at the end of those four weeks to see the level and extent to which the development had been done and how real it was already becoming. Uh, and now we're finally going to be announcing very soon uh, who the final technology development, uh, who will be managing the whole technology development piece of the platform. And the Singapore FinTech Festival is happening in November, so we'll have some big announcements at that point of time as well. But uh, yes, and if you want to know more, please write to us. I'd love to hear from any banks who are thinking of how they can use our platform 
very happy to discuss that. If there's any fintechs in the room, do tell us more about your capabilities as well. But yes, too much information. Everybody wants their drinks. Thank you so much.